and welcome to this King's Business School's Leading with EQ Taster session. My name is Michelle Gray and I'm Client Relationship Manager on this fantastic and very interesting programme. Today, we're going to take you through... Ali, could you bring up the next slide? We're going to take you through all the main context of this programme, anything that you would be interested in uh, from course content, the format as to how it's delivered its key themes and learning objectives. I'd like to introduce you to the program director who will be exploring and unpacking this program for you today. Her name is Dr. Ali Wujanov Chanin. And Ali is not only program director for Leading with EQ, she is also co-director for our Leadership and People Management Program. So, Ali, can I hand over to you? Thank you very much, Michelle, and good afternoon, everybody. Thank you very much for joining us today. Um, as Michelle said, my name is Dr. Ali budjanov Channin. Um, I'm an academic based in the business school here at King's, and today I'll be providing you with a brief introduction to, to me, but as well as in addition to that, I want to provide a bit of a taster to the Leading with EQ course. So first, just a little bit about me. So I'm a lecturer in work psychology and public sector management here at King's, and I specialise in lecturing on leadership. Um, I'm also the programme director, as Michelle said, for a number of um, the exec ed courses that we run here, including the one I want to talk to you about today. Uh, my main area of research is in leadership and career adjustment, and so I'm always really keen to be sharing some of the insights from that um, on these courses that we run. So, just to say a little bit um, about the Leading with EQ course and why we run this programme. Um, so, I guess there's two important things that we want, you know, we know about emotional intelligence. And those are that it can have a really important influence on individual outcomes in an organization, um, but also that it's a learnable set of skills. And so another thing that we also know is that the relational challenges that we have throughout our working lives are pretty inevitable. And so becoming really adept at handling those becomes really important, especially when you're in the role of a leader. Um, while emotional intelligence isn't the only predictor of, of human performance um, and our, kind of our developmental potential, it's been proven to be a really key indicator in these areas and can help us really learn to balance our, our emotion and our reason as a as particular situation requires. Um, so in our view here at King's, we, we, you know, we really believe that knowing how to handle your emotional intelligence and having practical help through this um, program, whether that's in the coaching or the feedback that you get from um, your emotional intelligence um, assessment, can really help you to become so much more emotionally adept. Um, and that's why we think it's important. So with that in mind, there's a few key areas of focus for this particular program. Um, the first is learning about this idea of emotional intelligence. What is it? Um, why should you as a, a leader be really clued up on it? And the second I put here is that, you know, giving you personalised feedback from the emotional intelligence assessment that I'll tell you a bit about um, and that we use really allows you to have a kind of baseline understanding of where you currently are with emotional intelligence or EQ, as we call it. And through the one to one coaching session with me, plus an in-person day with others on the programme, you can really start to learn um, about how you might develop your EQ and build it further. So I'll talk a little bit more about the components of the programme that I've just touched on there. But what we really want to do is to achieve with this programme is for you to come away with more than just sort of knowledge and theory, if you like. We want you to be able to see how this specifically um, applies to you. So let me just take you on to a little bit more about who is this for? So who is this, um, this programme aimed at? And um, to be clear, this programme is called Leading with EQ. Um, and it's obviously about uh, improving your emotional intelligence as a leader. But what I would like to stress is that uh, regardless of whether you're a leader, a follower, or, or where you are in your journey, um, improving your emotional intelligence is going to have a positive, positive impact on you um, inside of work or outside of it. So even if you don't have a team currently, you would benefit from this programme and you can take that learning away with you into your next leadership role. 
However, we do recommend that when you join that you do have a team to lead because then that gives you an opportunity to really work through some of the live issues that you've you've been experiencing in your own leadership role. And we found that can be really helpful to participate uh, participants on the course. So just a little bit about the course structure. Um, so what you'll see here is there are three elements to this course. Uh, what's not on this slide is that prior to this day one of the course, um, you will have completed an EQ assessment. Um, and that's what um, forms the, the kind of the crux of your personalized feedback. Um, and that happens about a week or 10 days prior to you coming. And then we launch into the course proper. So that's the three days that I put here. Um, this is a really blended course, and I'll explain a bit more about that in just a moment. But this course runs within the bounds of one week. You won't be required for the whole week, and I'll explain in a moment um, exactly how, but it will be done within, as I say, the bounds of that one week. So on day one here, um, the Monday, you'll do a half day virtual workshop in which you really learn about what EQ is. Um, you learn about why it's important for you, why it's important for leadership. Um, and we'll be learning about the particular model um, of EQ that we'll be using for your development. Or as it's been put here much more succinctly, the science of emotional intelligence. And then under day two, as you can see here, at some point over the, the next three days, you'd have a one to one coaching session with me where we discuss your personal feedback and we work through an understanding of what that really means for you. And then on the final day, which we've called day three here, this is on the Friday, we'd meet in person here in London, where we work together as a group to uh, formulate strategies for improving EQ. And so this involves bringing your own ideas and your own experience to the day, with me guiding you with some of the latest thinking on some of the skills that we're talking about developing. So the aim here really is to leave you on this final day um, with your full report, with an action plan of how you can take that away and really take your development forward. So just a little bit more on the, the details of the course. Um, as you see here, it starts on Monday the 28th with that live virtual half day session. Um, you have your um, midweek coaching session with me one to one and then that all day in person uh, session on the Friday. Um, as I said, it's a, a truly blended format. Um, and as we've noted here, if anything um, does change with the government guidance, we will, of course, be ready to switch everything to um, an online format. So I just want to move on to the next section um, of the webinar, which is to really give you a sense of some of the themes um, and, and a taster, really, um, of what this course is, is like. So I start this slide by really thinking about this idea of emotions in the workplace. Um, and this is something that we, we talk a lot about uh, on the course and how people tend to sort of view it. And so I start this slide by really trying to undo some of the thinking that, that has no doubt been ingrained in you like it has me for many, many, many years. Um, and this relates to what we call the myth of rationality. So for a long time, scholars who have studied organisations and the people um, within them have had this belief that in order for an organisation to be run efficiently, to be run well, um, they have to be completely devoid of emotion. Uh, the reality is um, that an organisation and the people who make up those organisations um, are inescapably about emotions. And I've, I've you know, tongue in cheek put hashtag being human here, just the idea that you know, we, we are human, we do have emotions, and, and actually we, we have to take them with us where we go. So at a very basic level, you're going to have emotional responses to all of the things around you and all of the people that you interact with. Um, so, you know, at a very basic level, emotions are what it means to be human. And then if you take that into the workplace and you think about the work context, my argument is, is that work and being a leader and can necessarily be an emotion laden experience. Um, I'm sure you can think of your own examples, but there are plenty where, you know, perhaps the goals that you go to work with, the things that you want to achieve, don't always align very well with perhaps what the organization wants to achieve. And because of that, you know, you'll find yourself either um, uh, having emotional responses in the workplace, um, even just leading your team on a daily basis. And so it really can, you know, 
speaks to that idea that we cannot separate ourselves from our emotions. We don't, you know, change them uh, or, or, or switch them out as we go into to the office. What I want to argue today and actually on the course is that emotions actually can be a, a real tool for leaders. Um, and so this long standing belief about the rationality of organisations and perhaps, you know, we can be a bit critical of that and suggest that it's slightly problematic. As I've said, emotions are kind of the essence of what makes us human and they're impossible to detach. But secondly, um, you know, because emotions and, and more specifically understanding how to recognize them and use them constructively and well, they can actually be a tool for us and um, a tool for us being effective. Um, and what we know is that increasingly research shows that organizations and, and leaders are starting to realize this. Um, emotions were also a really important part of our thinking process. Um, we know from lots of fancy technology and um, all of these mapping techniques that our thought process is actually passed through our limbic system, which is the emotional system in our brain. It's, a, it's where um, emotions uh, you know, emanate from. And it, as it makes that journey through that, sort of really um, translating external stimuli, um, into our sort of thought processes and actions and reactions, it will go through that emotional sensor. What we tend to perceive, and you know, I've often had this conversation with participants either on this course or elsewhere, is that emotions are a negative thing for our thought processes. We automatically assume that when we think about cognitive processes, emotions will cloud that, they cloud our judgment, they react, make us react impulsively and those sorts of things. And while some of this can absolutely be true, very much of that is dependent on us as individuals and how we, what we choose to do with our emotions. And so the argument that I'm putting forward here is that actually emotions are just another data point. And that's if nothing else you take away from today. I want that to be a key takeaway that you, you do um, appreciate that emotions are just data like any other data that you use as a leader to do your job, whether that's financial data or customer feedback or whatever it is. Um, emotions are just a signal about a particular situation. And so when you start to look at emotions in that way, emotions as data, what it can do, it can change not only the way that you think and feel about emotions, but also ultimately what you do with them. And that should enable you to identify and channel much more productive responses to emotions in the workplace. And really, this is where emotional intelligence comes in. If we can understand our emotional responses to situations and to others, then we can start to make deliberate choices to engage in strategies to master our emotional responses um, that will allow us to be more effective in the workplace with other people. So what exactly is, I've used this phrase quite a lot so far, what exactly is emotional intelligence? Well, it's a set of emotional and social skills and abilities that really enable us to sort of navigate the ups and downs of a working day of our lives and so on and so forth. Um, whether it's a big or a small challenge, uh, emotional intelligence will allow us to cope with those um, and therefore then leverage um, our own and others' emotions uh, in a way that can be really constructive. So it affects how we manage our behaviour, it, it allows us to navigate social complexities, which you know, are in abundance at work, um, and it really allows us to make personal decisions to achieve much more positive results in the workplace. And a, a kind of a good way to think about emotional intelligence is this idea, if you think about all the people that you know, um, I'm sure amongst them you can identify some who are just much more adept at dealing with life's day-to-day -day challenges. Uh, I love the word unflappable. You know, these people, um, probably doesn't need me to tell you, are the unflappable ones, the emotionally intelligent ones. Um, they know how to deal with the challenges in life. We'll cover this in the course, but emotional intelligence um, is often sort of, you know, bandied about as something that, that might be similar to other concepts. It's not personality, it's not that kind of unique combination of traits that, that we know as personality, and neither is it IQ, um, even though it has the word intelligence um, in it. And I'll really help to sort of unpick and, and show you how um, it's different to those things, but it's also complementary to them. So I just want to say a little bit um, more about what I mentioned a moment ago, this idea that EQ is actually really important to us um, for navigating the ups and downs. That's not to say we don't need emotional intelligence during normal times, 
but we need emotional intelligence even more when the stress or the challenge kicks in. Um, and the last few years have been a really, really great example of this, where we're facing so many stresses from all different angles. Um, and in some cases, you know, when we've been isolated with very little social support, um, all of this is a recipe for very challenging situations um, and puts us, you know, as we're already on edge, uh, to that tipping point. And so often um, with situations like that, which is an extreme, obviously, um, this is where having you know, really strong emotional intelligence can come into play. And I just wanted to highlight for you a, a really um, a great article by Schwartz and Pines in the Harvard Business Review. Um, in 2020, they really helpfully outlined the different kinds of self um, that we inhabit during times of crisis and fear. Um, and so they identify the child self, um, the defender self, and the adult self. Just to give you a quick overview, um, they identify the child self um, as being characterized by feeling very overwhelmed and uncentered. Um, so as the child self, uh, we often feel helpless and vulnerable, much as we sometimes did as children when we have to rely on other people to care for us. Um, and, and Schwartz and Pines suggest that in order to cope with um, threats that we face as a children, that we begin to form a second self. And this is the second one on the list here, the defender self. And again, Schwartz and Pines talked about the fact that this idea of a defender self is very dominant in our lives. And um, it doesn't only show up when we're feeling threatened and then you, know, you move into kind of fight or flight mode, rather it's the, the primary self that we inhabit um, for most of our lives. It's our persona, if you like. And when there isn't, you know, in the absence of stress, our defender self can be brilliant, very focused, very productive, um, you know, our winning self, if you like. But what we know about the defender self as well is that it's hypervigilant. And um, so it's always looking out for threats um, and, you know, being ready to, to sort of react to them. And so because this defender self is quite often then thinking about survival in this mode, we can be very reactive and impulsive, you know, engaging sometimes in counterproductive behavior as we seek to sort of protect our child self. And this is, you know, when we think about times of challenge um, at the extreme end, times of crisis as a leader, um, that's where sometimes the defender self can come out and be very unhelpful. In those times, that's where we ultimately want to be in the adult self. Um, the adult self is the capable, mature mode of being in a crisis or in a challenge. Um, and we're our very best self in this mode. My argument um, with this course is that our adult self has emotional intelligence as a tool rather than impulsive acting when faced, you know, faced with a crisis. Um, our adult self is able to, to look at um, you know, the threat of challenge or, or fear or anger um, and look at that in ourselves and treat those emotions in, in a particular way with care and compassion. Um, but what we know is that when we are faced with challenge, and it can just be you know, an interpersonal challenge, a, a falling out with somebody, a, a difficult team uh, member, what we know during those times is it's surprisingly hard to access the adult self. Um, and you know, maybe take a moment yourself just to consider, do you recognize these three selves in your own responses during times of challenge or stress um, and, and then I guess the more important question is which of these do you tend to revert to um, when you're feeling that stress. What we know is that each of these different selves will vie for attention and control and depending on the different demands that we're facing and the kind of crisis we're facing and uh, and and you know it tends to be that we will revert to the child or the defender self. Um, Again, my argument here is if you can become much more aware of these three selves, you can start to influence your behavior in the, in the face of, of a challenge. Um, and then we can make a conscious effort to try and step into our adult self um, in order to be able to try and have the kind of power and influence that will um, allow us to excel in our roles. And again, this is what EQ is all about. It's a tool for the adult self. So the final thing I want to share to you, uh, share with you, sorry, today, is just a little overview of this, um, this particular model. Um, so this model is the one that um, when we're doing the, the course, we have, um, as I said, a leadership assessment for you, um, which allows you to really understand your own EQI. And um, this is one of the leading assessments um, uh, in this area that looks at emotional intelligence. And so we'll be working closely with this model 
um, we'll be using it as part of your assessment um, and we'll be using it as a framework for you to think about how you can go on and develop some of these areas. And as you can see, um, the way uh, emotional intelligence is conceptualized um, with this model is that it's made up of these five broad areas. And within each of these, self-perception, self-expression, interpersonal decision-making and stress management, there are three sub-skills, if you like, and these are the ones that we'll be working with um, that can help you to start to understand where you sit in relation to each, but also where you can start to really develop yourself in relation to each. So we'll think about what each of them are and how they impact you at work, where you are with them right now, and what you can start to do to either um, develop them as skills or learn to use um, your skills to dial up and dial down on particular um, of these skills. As I said, these 15 dimensions also form the basis of the feedback report that you'll get on your own emotional intelligence, and it will provide you with a detailed breakdown of your scores and your development leads in relation um, to each of these 15 areas. Okay, so I just want to say a couple of other things before we um, I, I give you a chance to ask some questions. Um, so I just want to remind you of some of the key highlights of the course. Um, so if you do this course, you'll come away, I hope, with much more self-knowledge than when you started. Um, it will give you a real sense of where your strengths are, where your areas of development are um, in relation to emotional intelligence. And part of gaining this will be through the coaching session that will allow you to explore any live um, issues that you have going on or those that you've had in the past that can help you make sense um, of your emotional intelligence scores. Um, you'll also leave with a set of strategies and an action plan for next steps. Um, so here I am now, um, this is where I want to be, what are some of the things that I can do to get there? And you will, of course, um, get to meet both virtually and in person with other leaders on the program. Um, so that's you know a real highlight both for me and, and for you um, on the course. So just to finish up, I wanted to summarise on uh, some of the learning objectives for this programme. Um, I think I've covered this in what I've already said, um, but I'd like to just summarise in any case. Um, so, you know, one of the big things uh, that we'd like you to leave with is this new knowledge around emotional intelligence and how it works and why it's important. Um, you'll get that through the workshop, um, but you'll also get it through, um, through the, the feedback report that you'll get. And um, the other learning objective that's really important here is a much greater understanding of yourself as a leader. We know self-awareness is one of the really important traits of an effective leader. So this is just another step to, um, to bring you that greater self-awareness. And then finally, what we'd like to do is to help you really think about the next steps. So this is your personal development plan, um, which will be a really sort of key output uh, of doing this program. I think and I hope that gives you um, a taster of of what this program is about and, and enough of a, an idea of the learning objectives and, and the things that we're hoping to achieve, but very happy to take any questions if anybody has any um, regarding what I've just presented. Thank you, Ali. No I can't worries. see any questions um, at the moment in the Q&A box, uh, but if anybody has anything, please, please do type them there now. Can I ask a question? Ali, because I, I've been in executive education for over 14 years and I've been on other programs. I wish I'd known about this earlier in my career. Is there an optimum time in your career that you think people should study on a program like this? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, I would say straight away, no, there's not an optimum time. If you think about what emotional intelligence is about, it's about this ability to communicate well. It's about this. Uh, it's about the interpersonal realm, really. Um, throughout every stage of our career, we need to be able to do that effectively with others to be successful. Um, and yes, what we know about emotional intelligence is that as we gain more and more experience, we do get more adept at it. We have peaks in our life um, where, where emotional intelligence um, is at, at higher levels. Um, but that doesn't mean across the board, and you see there's 15 sub-dimensions of emotional intelligence there, that we're going to be good in all of those different areas. Um, so whilst it you know, absolutely in some ways can be linked to seniority, I would say this is, this is important for anyone. Um, in their careers and at any stage. Thank you, Ali. We've, we've got a question from Ariane. 
Um, she says, hello, I'm a researcher, first year PhD at the RCA in textiles. Is the course potentially for me as I'm looking into developing EQ with making textiles? Yeah, I mean, again, I'm not, I, I don't know the ins and outs of your um, industry, um, but this goes back to um, EQ being a, a, a set of skills that transcends any context. Um, so as long as you are, um, you know, interacting with other people, um, having to get things done through other people, then this course will be for you. And just to go back to what I said right at the beginning, um, absolutely, it's aimed at leaders, and we'll be talking about leadership throughout the course of this programme. Um, but ultimately, this can be beneficial to you in every domain of your life uh, where you're interacting with others. So absolutely, I think this would be relevant. Oh, Ariane said thank you. No um, does, does anyone have any other questions? If, if not, I'm just going to take us through a few points that I think people would be interested in about application process, et cetera, and next steps. So i just going to get rid of that question so we know if any new come up. So the application process. The next steps after today would be to use the contact details on the slide the email address there to reach out to myself and we can book a one-to-one -one consultation. We use Zoom for this. If Zoom is difficult, we can use Teams. And in that half an hour, we can talk about your experience, where you are at the moment, how you believe you want to leverage these skills in your career going forwards. Uh, we also talk about um, cost, payment, when that takes place, et cetera, if you'll be sponsored by your employer, um, if you have a question around that, um, could you help me to write a business case to put forward to my boss or HR? And the answer is definitely yes. In fact, um, we have a webinar that discussed that in its entirety. But, but this, is, this is what the client relationship managers are here for, to help you through the whole process and to make sure that it is the right program for you um, before we send you the link to make your application. This can be done very quickly. So within two days, you can have your approval to actually make your application. And we have set up on this program an early bird rate for you, which will save you 15% on the full fee. And you can pay by credit cards or an invoice can be arranged that's, that's sent to your business. The closing date for the program is very close to its start date of 28th of March. So the closing date is the 21st of March. If you're unable to get an answer from your boss um, as quickly as that. Uh, but I will say that this program um, is getting close to its capacity. I would expect in the next three weeks it will be full. Uh, so please be mindful of, of that. Um, one other thing I'd like to mention, the Leadership and People Management program at King's, uh, which takes place next in June, over four and a half days, actually touches upon emotional intelligence. This program, combined with the Leadership and People Management, really do come together beautifully. The one underpins the other and you would get the maximum out of this program if you actually undertake the leadership and people management as well. And I have several people who have committed to this program who also want to undertake the leadership program as well. 
So I'm very happy to talk to anyone to explore that opportunity as well, um, because it it makes absolute sense and the two just fit beautifully together. Uh, so really, next next steps would be to arrange a one to one consultation. My email address is there. If you go onto the particular web page at our uh, King's Business School website, there is a box there that says book your one to one consultation. So you can either do it that way or come directly through to myself. But I do hope that we will welcome you onto this program. I have particularly asked to participate. I am so interested in this. Uh, I wish I'd done it earlier, uh, but I'm going to be doing that on the 28th of March. So I look forward to seeing you, hopefully, on that date and receiving any inquiries or questions and offering support in any way I can. So thank you for attending today. Thank you, Ali, very much for those insights and uh, hopefully speak to you soon. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you.